How do you improve on one of the most successful cross-country race bikes ever made? Well, if you're Scott and you're talking about a Spark, this is a result. It is of course the brand new 2022 Scott Spark. And as you can see, it's had a radical makeover with the rear shock now concealed within the carbon frame. But that is just a tip of the iceberg. There are many other changes which I'll go through in this video. But first, let's go for a spin and see how it performs. And I'm here in sunny Glentress to ride a bike for the very first time. That the Spark is a race bike, it's really clear the moment you get on and start pushing hard on the pedals. This bike is so damn fast that it's almost overwhelming. Your senses are bombarded with the trail blurring past that speed. It makes for an intoxicating first ride impression as I chase Scott UK's Tony up the first climb at Snakes into the Glentress hillside. The twin lock suspension adjustment is carried over from the old Spark, so you might be familiar with it. Switching to a traction mode firms up the suspension and keeps the seat angle steeper. This lets me really attack the first climb as it darts around the trees and over rocks and roots. The new bike now sports more suspension travel than the old bike, up from 100 to 120 millimeters. It doesn't sound like a big change, I know, but on a cross-country race bike, as a percentage, it's a massive change. The extra suspension gives you more capacity to carry momentum through the rougher section of the trails you might encounter. And that is great news for the increasingly technical World Cup cross country race courses that are pushing the development of bikes like the Spark. But also for trail riders wanting to push their limits on local trails. The revised geometry helps too. We've now got a longer reach and a slacker head tube angle with further adjustment via removable headset caps to tune a setup for your requirements and the course you're riding. While the geometry has been gratefully modernised with more length and a slacker head angle, it's not troubling the more progressive bikes that might fall under the down country umbrella. Still, it's a big step in the right direction and ensures the new Spark is just as much fun tackling technical trails as it is scorching climbs. Throughout my first ride, the stiffness of the new carbon frame and the 35mm leg RockShox Sid fork is clear to feel when carving through the corners and hipping into berms. There's less vagueness when you really push it into the apex of the corner and holding tighter racing lines feels easier to achieve. It just feels more precise and much more focused than the old bike. That stiffness is also present on the climb too with immense power transfer when you get on the pedals and shove them for all you're worth. The 26 pound weight of a test bike without pedals also helps when overcoming the effects of gravity, but I'd happily incur a small weight penalty for a drop post for more descending whoops. Boy, is this a sleek looking modern mountain bike. The most notable change is the rear shock, which is now hidden inside the carbon frame. It's a move made possible by Scott Buying Bold, another Swiss bike company a few years ago, and incorporating their unique hidden shock design into a brand new spark. And I'm totally sold on the looks. It's modern, clean, I love it. Aside from the appearance, the benefits are numerous. The shock is now protected from the elements, that great in the UK winter. They can also beef up the down tube for more stiffness along with bigger bearings to prevent sideways movement and the center of gravity is lower and they've also refined the suspension performance. And there's space for two water bottles inside the mainframe, bonus. Thankfully though, it's easy to make adjustments to the rear suspension. A trap door allows access to the air valve and the rebound adjuster dial on the rear shock, while a sag indicator built into the swing arm allows easy adjustment. 
a small window in the frame lets you push the rubber o-ring back down for sag adjustment and can even drop the shock out of the frame completely for servicing. I do recognise that this integrated design won't be for everyone but it's all in the name of extracting more performance out of the new spark. The clean looks continue at the front of the bike with full internal cable routing in the stem and handlebar with a one piece carbon handlebar and stem on the top end, no expense spared models. This definitely helps keep the twin lock tangle cables to a minimum. Okay, let's talk about money. The new Spark covers a wide range of prices with alloy versions starting at a very reasonable £2,199 and topping out at a very spendy £11,999. My test bike for the day costs £4,599 with a SRAM Eagle GX Access Wireless Group Set, Syncross Wheels, RockShox Sid Fork and New Shock and an alloy handlebar. It might just be the pick of range too, but just factor in a dropper post upgrade in my opinion. So this is the RC race focus model, but it's also the 900 trail version with a longer travel 130 fork, wider handlebars, dropper seat posts and beefier tires. Perfect if you're riding more down country than lung busting cross country racing. In summary then, it's fair to say I'm impressed with the direction the new Spark has taken. With a long list of technical developments and a radical new look, but what really matters is how it rides. And the Spark is a belter. It's everything you want from a cross country race bike. Fast, light, efficient, ruthless, but a Spark is now more fun and capable on the technical trails that will have an old school race bike tied up in knots and falling over itself. Cross country race bikes had never been the coolest bikes in the gang, but that's all changing now and the latest developments make them the most exciting in my opinion and the Spark is a step in the right direction. My first ride on the new Spark was brief and I can't wait for a longer ride on this bike when it's available later in the year. But that's all for now, hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.